I think first thing on the sheet here and most important thing to talk about is Patrice Bergeron hit a thousand points in his career. Saint Patrice. Saint Patrice. I, I I had like a moment of reflection when it happened and I thought about just I've watched Patrice my whole life. Like my whole life as a hockey fan, right? He's played for 20 years, right? Is this his 20th season or his 19th season? I think I think 21st. It's one of those three. Like so it's just for me as 26 years old, I've been watching Bergeron my whole life. So it's just it's crazy to think about I love how we we continued. We we make a joke. So sorry to interrupt, but we make a joke when Kevin mutes himself and then starts talking. Oh no, you were trying and to talk? He yeah. was trying to talk and say a number that he obviously looking at him was pretty convinced that it's accurate. Oh, so 19. Can I continue 19. All right, perfect. 19. I said great. it's 19 on the writer. I would know. Oh, great. Well, maybe if you unmuted, everyone else would have got to hear that too. I, did, I didn't know until my screen said, hey, buddy, you're muted. And you dropped the ball. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> Bergeron, just it's been we're so lucky to get to watch this guy. And when he finally hangs it up, I'm gonna be legit emotional on that day. That's gonna suck. It's gonna suck to see him hang him up. I hope that this team and how much fun they're having keeps him around for a few more years. I really do. Yeah, it's not like he's lost a step. That dude's oh. lethal. Dude's lethal. He He's still like he has nine goals, 10 assists for 19 points in 21 games. He's plus 11. He's in the top early power old, play unit, your yeah. top penalty kill unit. Probably, number one in early season Selkie voting yeah. already. Probably winning number like one in face offs. Face offs, like dude yeah. does everything. <laughs> yeah, he's 61 43 right on the face off dial, which yeah. is unheard of. Right. You it's have to think chill. that he's going to be a hot topic conversation for representing the Bruins come all star time. Yeah, he did it last year. I wonder if they pass this one over to Pasta. But if they I think really if feel it's last year, it's going Pasta, back. To him. It might be Olmark, to be honest. I I do think if they send a goalie, the Bruins will get two. I really I think the Bruins will get two. I do agree. I Olmark think because of how successful they are right now, they, they should, should get, get two. two. Sometimes I mean, even three. If we're going to be realistic, the Bruins should send Lindholm, Pasta, Bergeron, and Olmark right now. And Marshawn deserves it too. So does McAvoy probably, but they just, they're not going to have, I think the, I mean, even crazy, <laughs> even crazy there. Crazy has 17 points in 18 games. The Bru- I mean, guys, the Bruins have lost three, three hockey games this year. And one team could be an all-star team. Yeah. That's just the reality. Well, at least you know that uh, most likely Jim Montgomery is going to be behind the bench. Yeah. Which is cool. Which is really cool. I, it's something that like, I think all three of us were like happy for Montgomery when he got hired. And I think we all are, we're all definitely big second chance guys, as we've said before on a million different topics, but for him, a guy who like battled what he battled and to just be, seems like an absolute nail gun of a human. I'll be honest, like I was, I was the skeptical one in the bunch and it was purely out of, I really haven't seen a lot of this guy's resume to yeah. really know what to expect. Yeah, it, it wasn't on. Not Bruce, like Bruce Cassidy wasn't a terrible coach. Like the Bruins weren't no. doing awful. So it's like, yeah, um, sure. We'll see how this one pans out. And then what do you know? Bruce Cassidy and Jim Montgomery are both absolutely killing it with two new teams. Yeah, they're both good coaches. And that's- Bruce Cassidy proved that he wasn't necessarily the problem per se, but contributed to it at least. Yeah, I, I think that this Bruins team needed a player's coach, and Cassidy wasn't that. Still a great coach, but Montgomery is pulling the puppet strings the right way. He really is. There's not, I mean, come on. He just he set a record for the he, – the team and him just set a record for 12 home wins to start the season in a row. That, that's a record now. They're in the record books for that. When you look up most wins to start a season at home, Jim Montgomery's Boston Bruins are there. Yeah. That's another milestone this team's hitting many more. They're going to hit so many more. If they stay even remotely on this track, they're going to win the President's Trophy. And the Stanley Cup will have to come through Boston, one of the hardest places to play in the NHL. I don't want to look that far forward, but it's hard not to. Like, it's, it's hard not to. It's, I, I get skeptical. I think there's then, a couple hurdles in the way, especially oh, when it yeah. comes to, you know, what trade are the Bruins going to make yeah. for the cap purpose. Um, but I think – Looking at it and saying the Boston Bruins are a Stanley Cup contender at this point, I don't think that that's crazy at all. I mean, no, I think it's, it's just the truth. Nobody expected it. I don't think any three of us expected that. I think we all predicted they would lose in the first or second round if they made the playoffs. Yep. 
and it was like the day they, when we looked at the lineup, and I think all three of us were like, "Wait a minute." Yeah, like you look at the lineup, and you're like, "Hmm, well, that's a loaded lineup." And sure enough, <laughs> it the is Bruins, the Bruins' bottom six, and I mean, especially somebody like Nick Foligno and uh, Charlie Coyle playing the way that they're playing. I mean. <sighs> Good God. Or even Taylor Hall. Like, Taylor Hall has 13 points in 21 games. If he's going to play that bottom six, he kicked ass today. He was laying the body, getting in deep, making things happen. And it's like, Taylor Hall, to me, is a guy who... Was he on the third line again today? Yeah. I didn't get to watch. Yeah, he was on the third line, and he played He played a third-line skilled game. He grinded. And just like I said, right, he got more minutes than DeBrusque, and he got more minutes than Zaka. They're not like... He's on the third line, but he, you know what I mean? He's playing 17 He still gets his cookies time. Yeah, like that's, so it's like, that's where I don't think he has any problem with that because him and Coyle are playing second line minutes. So it's really like not, I think it, that's definitely a non-issue for him. The Bruins and, can really cycle four lines pretty evenly. And roll and grind and grind. That's why they can go down 2 nothing to a Carolina team and win a game. And win in overtime. Yeah, that's why. I, Brings me right back. Pasta's shot to win that game. Oh my God. There was not a goalie in the NHL who stops that shot. It was just a rocket, snap the twine, and was back out, back out at the dot in like a second because it was so hard. It just, <laughs> this guy has an unreal shot. There are a couple injury things we got to talk about here at the Bruins. We have Freddie and, and Smith who are day to day right now, both with upper body injuries. It seems like both of them are going to be okay. I do have a feeling Smith's might be a little more related to trade or something, which we can get into in a little bit. Freddie, we saw him kind of self-inflicted. Oh, I my think. God. He hit the boards hard. Yeah. That's just. He'll be back soon, sooner rather than later, obviously. Yeah, it seems just like a bruise, sprain type situation on his wrist, elbow area. So The way he was playing, we want Freddie back. We really do. Yeah. He's been – he was playing pretty good. Um, he understands his role, and that's the thing, yeah. like – and we've talked about how close Montgomery and Frederick are and how like Montgomery grew up with like Frederick's dad and how close they are and everything. And Montgomery understands like Frederick's strengths and that's what they're playing too. And Freddie understands that like Freddie, you don't have to go out there and score twenty goals. Be that grinder, be yeah. that guy we want. Don't have to fight every night. But just be that kind of like tough grinding skill guy. And that's what he's doing. And it's just yeah, gonna no, come, he... it's gonna come to him, so I really do. I think Freddie was about to really break out. I still think yeah. he's going to. Like, I mean, a, an injury that takes you out for three or four games in the 82 game season. Yeah, gonna, I think Freddie can still he can still be that 12 goal, 12 yeah. to 15 goal guy. It's and that's yeah. all you need from him. Like being out I, three to four games, you know, doesn't kill him as a player. But the thing no. it's really screwing up is the trade scenarios yeah, for the is. Boston Bruins it because is. you keep you keep nickel and diming a couple games here and there, <laughs> where now you need to bring another player up. Okay, yep. well, you still need to make a trade, and the cap just gets more complicated and more complicated. Oh, I agree. I do agree. Like, the Bruins do need to start to think about acting soon on that front. But another I mean, injury we had today, right? Oh, you can go. Mike Riley is already requested for yeah. a trade. So you have to think that with the increased scouting presence in Providence recently, with him being down there and the Bruins, you know, having some rumors going around that they're kicking tires on specific players for the trade deadline, et cetera. It sounds like you're coming into that time of the year. We're in that two to three months before the trade deadline where things are going to start to kindle and smoke and burn. Yeah. yeah and especially if the, you have the clear cap space before you bring Derek forward back. Yep. So there's so many, so many things, things that, are coming. So things are coming do, so. team for sure. Oh, 100%. It's, 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 it's good to see, though. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, happen. it has to happen. We've been yeah. seeing this from before the year. I was like, this doesn't work. The math doesn't work. It just can't all work. That's the biggest issue. Another injury we have today, which scared me for a couple oh. minutes, was Allmark. Allmark gets pulled. Swayman comes in. Swayman played lights out to help the Bruins win this game, which I was very happy about. And Montgomery, calm, yeah, I know. And Montgomery calmed us all down after the game, saying Sway, uh, saying, "Oh, he's going to be okay." Swayman reiterated that he called him a big Swedish Viking and said he was going to be fine. <laughs> so I think it was just a uh, he's he's in pain. Let's be precautionary. We have Swayman. Good opportunity for Swayman to come in and have a a bounce that was, back. Hey, 
we're 17 and three. It doesn't matter if we lose yeah. this game. Yeah, like we got to be smart. And they were, and Swayman showed up and showed out, made some athletic, nice saves, especially in overtime. It's like, out of boy sway. I was really happy to see that. Another thing I want to bounce on before we get into a little debate, a little embrace of some debate. Swayman after the game brought up again that um, at this point he considers himself Felino Jr. Um, Felino had him over to his house yesterday for Thanksgiving because obviously his family lives in Alaska. And it just shows like the little things with Nick Felino where I'm so glad that the three of us were so wrong. I really am. I yeah. think he's one of the most important guys in that locker, and I'm glad he's Yeah, there. no, but that was the thing. We never disagree we, that he's a leadership guy. Yeah. It was just on the ice production. We always knew what he brought to the team as a leadership locker room guy because yeah. we needed all of his experience. It was just, hey, can we get more of the ice? And he's and responded. And he's responded. So. Yeah, him and Taylor Hall essentially are almost identical. Yeah. Like legit Isn't almost identical. Sad? No, I, I don't know. I'm <laughs> fine with it. Like, I want t- Taylor Hall being a point, a little bit over a point every other game. I'd like to see, I want him in 40, 50 to 60. I still think he gets there. And Felino's outperform. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not really mad at either of them. It's the role. Hall's playing in the role he's in right now. Felino's playing above it. That's, I mean, fair. Yeah. If Taylor Hall's being paid to be. Oh, yeah. A top six score. Yeah. Well, he needs time with those guys. That's the issue. I think Ta- Hall does get hurt by the lineup moving around. They're like Hall and Pasta are magical together. But they weren't exactly lighting it up. Hall Pasta yeah. was. But that's the but I mean it's hard. Like it's like they weren't exactly lighting it up as they dominate half the teams they play. It's like all right, all right, guys. So uh, a high tide raises really all game. ships. Obviously. He had a really good game today, I'll tell you that. So with the Bruins being an absolute wagon right now, obviously Hall is going to have a lot of cookies because everybody's rolling. Yeah. But when this team dips, is Hall still going to be that point other game player or is he going to bottom out? That's to, the question. To give you now. my right now, though, just Hall has picked up his game significantly just for he has four points. He's had a point in every game for the last four games. Like he has, he really has like taken a little jump and I think he's going to keep pushing on that. Like he, he just, he's been he's streaky. So. Yeah, yeah, he's on a hot streak right now. Like if you watch the game today, you'd be like, "Yep." Like he was just getting in deep, hitting everything, making plays. There was one where in overtime, he toe dragged through two people's legs, got a shot, and he just saved it. It was he looked. There was some vintage Taylor Hall today, which was really good to see. Now a little little thing the Bruins had announced today. They showed the Winter Classic jersey, and I think we were kind of split on it. I have it right here. I'll bring it up for all of our YouTube fans. Guys, you should be listening to this on YouTube because you get the video, you get to see our beautiful faces, and you get to see all the cool stuff I bring up on the screen, like the Winter Classic jerseys. Connor, I'll let you go first. I know you don't like them. I don't. I just feel like it's extremely lazy. And I actually saw a meme after I More went than on the that last rant. one, though? More than la- the last one that was just this in white with just a B? Yeah, because that had more stuff all over the jersey. I I own every Winter Classic jersey that the Bruins have ever had. So I, I've seen all the little intricate things. And I know that this Bruins version this year has something on the back collar, just like they had in 2019. But there was also a patch on the front that went along with the logo. There was shoulder pad emblems. There are shoulder specific pad emblems things. on this. There are. It's I haven't not, seen them. It's in just any not of the showing you here. They're on it. Like when I, I bought one for transparency, I bought the Bergeron one. It has, see the Winter Classic logo you see in the center? Yeah, that's uh, on the that's shoulder on the shoulders. Pads. Yeah, that's on the shoulders. And I don't then, have any idea why they're not showing it on their, their model here. The stripes on the jersey just remind me of like Chicago and Detroit's reverse retros. Like just a, a bland band around the arms and then boston on the front like who cares we all know like i would have rather have seen them made that ugly ass bear a little bit bigger <laughs> that's the it's so ugly it's like a jeep gladiator that the meth bear is so ugly it's kind of cool that's like how i am with it i like the jersey i like the black and yellow i like i like a lot of things you don't like like i like the simple stripes on the arms and i like where it says boston in the middle um i think it's i actually kind of really like it Dude, and I think, I think the Penguins, Penguins jersey one. is equally as fun. The Penguins one sucks. <laughs> the Penguins one, I, I don't like it all. With just a big P, 
I wish they put like a cool, cool old vintage penguin. They have so many cool old penguins they could have used. It's like, yeah. I don't Kev, know. How do you feel? It's underwhelming in the jersey department. Kev, are you buying one? Are you going to match at the game? Um, I'm hit or miss right now. But for me, it's I like everything but the bear. It's I know, just, I know. It's, Kevin doesn't it's, like the it's best stupid. Bear. It's stupid. I think the Beth Bear is actually ugly. Oh, yeah. No, he, the Meth Bear is ugly. There's no doubt about it. I'm a Pooh Bear fan, not a Meth Bear fan. Like, there's just so many better jerseys that they could have made. They could have dipped back to so many other times in the Bruins' history to drum up a new jersey, and this is what we got. Like, come on. Eh, I'm sure we'll have 10 more winter classes or, over Jake, the next yeah, 10 years. Even, so. yeah, no you, worries. It's on that uh, beanie that we bought the game, that you bought the game last time we went. Oh, that logo is my favorite logo. Yeah, like put that the, there with Boston. I could probably try to find it, if, but I, it's it's like the classic, the one with like the bear and then. Scissors well, I Boston think we're gonna get all. new Bruins jerseys within the next two years. Like we are going to home the and away. Con- the Adidas contracts up. Yeah, I, they will. Um, they're not gonna change much, but they might change like shoulder patches, things like that. Do you know who's like leading the way on that? I heard I like early on that Lululemon was making a push. Lululemon did a lot of stuff for the Canadian. <laughs> jerseys for the olympics but i do wonder like are the canadian olympic kits and all that i wonder if they make they'll be expensive but pro- i guess they can't really be much more than the 260 they're already charging yeah so, like i mean the nhl dictates steep. that yeah 100 not, not who makes 100%. Them. they're like oh, yeah. hey you have to create this product and we have yeah to do this, this is your margin X. this is yeah and it's up to them to figure out their margins and how good yeah. quality i think that the three of us can agree the Adidas has done a great job with the quality of these jerseys is top notch compared to the, um, the Reebok. Reebok ones. Like I have the like the NHL level Reebok jersey and I have an Adidas one. The Adidas one blows out of the water. That's for damn sure. Imagine if somebody like Under Armour did their jerseys. They do a good job. Like I Under, think Under Armour has really quality stuff. Yeah, I like Under Armour a lot. I mean, I also like Adidas. I think both of them would do a good job. I think Nike, I wouldn't want Nike. I think Nike will just... I think Nike has always seen hockey as an afterthought. So I don't like when they really get anything with it. When Nike was involved with Bauer, it was like Bauer's low point to me. And once they completely separated, it's when they really started to take off. Yeah. So I don't know. But that's kind of it for the Bruins. I mean, obviously a good amount of news there. Bruins are hitting milestones every day. Um, We're all happy with where the Bruins are going. And um, let's dive into some more salty parts of this East. 